Hey guys, welcome back to another 3D printing video. And today we're going to be checking out a little filament dryer made by Sunlu called the Phila Dryer S1. So if you've been printing for some time, you know that filament can absorb moisture and have quite a few issues like cracking and overall just having poor print quality, especially if you live in humid environments. All right, so let's get started. guys so the Phila dryer s1 comes in this package here and it's quite a nice a retail box so we have a picture here in front of what it looks like 3d printing meat drying while printing to improve your 3d models so we have compatible with multiple coils temperature adjustable timer function heats up quickly and evenly so it does run off of 24 volt the maximum power it uses is 40 watts all right so let's get the box open it does have a handle Okay, so it is packaged very nicely and also there's a little manual inside. So this is how it's wrapped out of the box very nicely and it's not very heavy. As you can imagine, it's kind of like an empty box. But as far as the finish is concerned, it's quite attractive. So we have a clear cover here on the top and a white bottom with a nice a logo that says Sunlu. And the first thing that comes to my mind is how nice would this be if you could actually use this as a spool holder also. And not only can you dry your filament, but you also get the function of holding the spool. So, so it looks like it does fold all the way down. So inside of it we have a styrofoam that's in the shape of a filament roll and our power supply is in it. So I like how they did that, it's not just bouncing around. Let's see what the supply looks like. And so here we can see it is a 24 volt, 2000 milliamp, which is two amps. And the cable reach looks to be about four feet long. So let's take a closer look at the dryer itself. So if we look here on the inside, it's quite an interesting design. On the sides, we have like a insulating foam here with some foil on the outside. And this appears to be kind of like what they use underneath the heated beds. So the heating element itself is this metal sheet that goes all the way around and it gives off heat evenly all around the spool. And the filament sits on these two bars here. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but they actually spin. And so that's really nice to see, so it's not just friction based. Now just looking at this makes me wonder if there should have been some kind of protection to the side here because it appears to be that a roll of filament could rub on the insulation here. But yeah guys, as you can see overall, it looks like a really nice quality built interior in here. Well, let's go ahead and close the lid. So as we're looking at the top of it, we can see it has a really nice design. It has a little step out here on the sides. We can see that there's a plug. And this is the output where the filament comes out. But you have two options. You have one here on the bottom and you have one on the top. Which me, I think I'd prefer the top one unless you have a really low extruder. Now one thing I would say having experience with plastic is I wish they'd had some kind of metal insert between the holes. And here's a little rubber cap that just pops out. But what could happen over time as the filament comes out and if it's, you know, rubbing on one edge too hard, it cuts into the plastic and then it could potentially jam. Now, I'm not sure what kind of plastic this is. Maybe it'll hold up a lot better for those kind of frictions. But in any case, we can transfer this plug down here. And as we open it, it'll just go with the top part. All right, and as we come down, we can see that we have a display here and a couple buttons, and we'll uh, go over that once we plug it in. And underneath the dryer, we have nice rubber feet. So I'm really glad that they use these very nice and sticky feet. So when it is sitting on the table, it is not going to move. And at the very back of it, we have the power plug, plug in our power adapter. So let's go ahead and do that. And it's not showing anything, so maybe we need to push a button, and here we go. So right off the bat, guys, the backlit is very dim. I'm gonna turn off my light here. Maybe we can see it a little better, but you can see how dim that is. But I guess not a big deal. Technically, you're not really gonna be looking at this constantly. So it looks like that's the thermostat. It says 26, 27 now. Okay, so here it looks like you can adjust the temperature. Let's see how low it goes. So it goes from 35C to 55C. So I think 50 where it was at should be just right. So there should be a way to do the timer. Let's try holding the button. 
Okay, there we go. So if you hold it, you can tell it how much time you want. And it does go all the way up to 24 hours. So yeah, it looks like it's warming up. It's already at 35 degrees. So yeah, to set the timer, you have to hold this button for a few seconds. And then when you're done, you have to hold it to go back. And then these just adjust your temperature on the fly. I'm going to leave mine at 24 because I'm actually going to do a really long print. So it'd be nice if we could dry my filament that whole time. All right, so it's heating up and we should be able to feel it. And sure enough, it is getting kind of toasty in there. And the printer I have over here is the Sunlu S8. And I've been printing a couple larger pieces for a project because it does have a great bed size. So if you're interested in a large format 3D printer and you're on a budget, check out the Sunlu S8. It's a great printer. So I'm going to go ahead and power it on so I can get that filament out. All right, so as that's all heating up here on the dryer manual, I noticed there's a little graph here and it breaks down all the different filaments and what the temperature should be. So for PLA, it's recommended 45 to 50. And then harder materials like ABS and whatnot else is 50 to 55. So now I guess you do want to go a little lower on things like PTG and TPU. So, so yeah, there's just some basic things in here, some specs and some instructions on what everything does. And the reason this manual is so big is because it has five different languages on it. All right, so we preheat it. We should be able to take out our filament pretty easily now. And I don't know if you guys can see, but we already hit 50C. So it's just hovering there now. All right, so let's go ahead and install our filament. And we're gonna simply take a roll and put it in there. And it does look like it can accommodate a wider roll because it has quite a bit of room inside. And yeah, those rollers are definitely working like they should because I'm pulling just a little bit and it rolls. So that's really nice to see. So if we were gonna use this outlet, we wouldn't have to feed it through the cover, but because we're using the top hole, we need to feed our filament through there. And there we go. And it definitely, definitely should go through there. And now we can go ahead and feed it into the printer. All right, so here's a little overview of what it looks like. So the filament comes out of the spool and then goes into the printer. And you can see this top hole lines up pretty much perfect. And this thing's not all the way down right now, so it will go down quite a bit. But this is where the last print finished and where this next one I'm about to print will also finish. And I can feel the top of the lid is definitely getting warm. It's quite toasty in there. And it is staying at 50C here. Now looking at this design, it would make me think that maybe the LCD screen should have been on the side somewhere instead of the front. Because if, you know, if you're going to use this as a spool holder, that you know you're constantly going to be facing that way or even actually on the back would make more sense because you obviously would be able to see that much easier than this thing being closer to the printer so all right so i think we're ready to go ahead and start printing so we're going to print from sd card or we're going to print this file right here so it is kind of going to arch down just a little bit in the beginning but it's a slight arch so all right so we purged and away it goes so this is quite a large print and it's taking up pretty much the whole bed and this is a very large bed, and you can see my hand here. You can kind of see what the last print looked like. And that's what it's printing again. And this print will take about 35 hours to print, so it's quite a large print. All right, so everything looks good, and we're printing away. So I'm just gonna let it be, and uh, hopefully we can finish this print without any issues. All right guys, so the print is done and it took 35 and a half hours to print. So it was a very long print as you can see. It's a quite a large model here. And this is piece of a motor that I'm building that uses mostly 3D printed parts. So if you like that kind of stuff, stay tuned for this video. But as far as the finish is concerned, hopefully you guys can see, but it is a very nice finish. So I can't really tell if it's much better or not, but it's definitely very uniform. And I think drying the filament had definitely something to do with it. And so as far as the fillet dryer goes, there was no issues whatsoever. We didn't have any tangles. We didn't have anything funny happen. The roll spun very easily. Now it did turn off after 24 hours and I did have to power it back on. And every time it goes through a cycle, it resets the timer to six hours. So if you want more, you have to go in manually and set it to more or less. But yeah, guys, overall, I really think this is a great product. You can't really appreciate this thing unless you've printed for a while. And you know how bad the filament gets after it sits. But what makes this even better is that you're doing it in real time as you're printing. So you're having really dry filament going in straight into the machine.
So yeah guys, I really think this is a great addition to any 3D printer and can be even more useful if you're printing PETG and other higher temperature filaments. So if you're having filament issues while printing and cracking, breaking, you know, popping out of your nozzle because little bubbles coming out from water evaporating or having bad surface finishing on your print, a dryer like this can solve a lot of those problems. And another great thing about having a dryer like this is that if you have a lot of filament, you don't have to try to keep all that filament dry. Every time you need to use it, you just put it in here and you pre-dry it 30 minutes to an hour before you start printing and that'll guarantee that your filament will be ready to go or obviously you could use this you know not even as a spool holder but just a dedicated dryer put a roll in there and then set the timer and dry out your rolls one by one as you need them all right guys well hopefully you enjoyed this video of the Sunlu Filla dryer so if you want to pick up one of these I'm gonna have some links in the description check that out and if you enjoyed this video hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this and other things I do on this channel I do a lot of 3d printing stuff and there's a lot more to come and also I want to say thank you for everyone that watches my videos. So have a great weekend. Happy 4th of July and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.